Now we're going to learn on the cardiac conductivity. So I'm going to draw a very healthy and large heart. So this is our heart. And then I'm going to divide it into the right and left side of the heart. So this is the right side. This is the left side. And this is the septum. We have the interventricular septum here. And then I'm going to divide the heart into the atria and also the ventricles. So this area is the atria and these are the ventricles. And it is separated by this structure here. This structure is very important. This is the annulus fibrosis. So from the name itself, we can know that it is made of fibrous tissue. So this fibrous tissue is very important because one, it is the skeleton of the heart. So meaning that it is the one that holding the heart together. Without it, the heart will collapse. Even though I doubt it because the cardiac muscles are very strong, it is the one that is, that is holding the other structures of the heart. And another reason why this structure is important is because it is an insulator. It cannot conduct electrical impulses. So the impulses from the atrium cannot simply travel to the ventricle. So what happens if the atrium and ventricle conduct impulse at the same time? So they are going to contract at the same time. So if atrium and ventricle are contracting at the same time, so we don't know where the flood may flow. So that's why the atrium will contract first and then the ventricle will contract. And the valve will maintain that the blood flow in the heart is following one direction. Now we go to the other structures of the heart. We have the SA node here. So the SA node is our pacemaker. So this SA node will produce impulse and the impulse will travel throughout the myocardium and then go to the whole atria. And then the impulse will also reach another structure here, which is the AV node. So because one of the property of the cardiac muscle is conductivity, so we know that the impulses from the SA node can travel via the myocardium. And then it will reach this structure. So this structure is the AV node and this is a very important structure. So the AV node will delay the impulse. So it will wait for the atrium to contract and then after that, after a few milliseconds, and then it will pass the impulse to the specialized conduction pathway. So this structure is very, very important because it acts as a gate. It will not simply allow the impulse to go to the ventricle. So this is important because the ventricle needs some time for the ventricle to be filled with blood. The ventricle will be filled with blood during passive ventricular filling. So this process is actually not passive because it requires the ventricle to contract first. So during ventricular contraction, it will squeeze all the blood from the ventricle. And this process needs energy. And then it will be followed by ventricular relaxation. So when the ventricle relax, it actually creates something like a vacuum inside the ventricle. And this will pull the blood from the atria into the ventricles. That's why the ventricle needs some time for it to be filled up with blood. So this process is very much dependent on the AV node because the AV node will control the impulse that is passed down to the ventricles and cause ventricular contraction. If the ventricle is contracting too fast, like in supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia, so the ventricle is contracting too fast, there won't be enough time for the blood to be filled into the ventricle. So even though the heart rate is increased, but the stroke volume is reduced. The blood in the ventricle is reduced. So the cardiac output is reduced. So that's why in very high heart rate, like in arrhythmia, there is cardiogenic shock because the cardiac output is remarkably reduced.